I took a cell phone and、uh, accidentally made myself famous. <laughs> I was just talking about the things that I cared about, but with the click of a button and an incendiary viral video, I propelled myself into overnight stardom. And、um, the subject matter of my videos was often the most divisive subject in American life, but it was the way that I articulated race. That made me somewhat of a digital lightning rod. See, being a survivor myself of police brutality, and having lost a childhood friend, Alonzo Ashley, at the hands of the police, I had a little something to say about the topic. You see, this was at the height of the Black Lives Matter furor, and people seemed to be turning to me to articulate their viewpoints. And honestly, it was sort of overwhelming. I soon became familiar with the phenomenon of the internet troll. These guys seem to live beneath the bridges of said superhighway. <laughs> I、um, remember being called highly colorful racial slurs by those who used the anonymity of the internet as a clan hood, and、um, some of them were pretty creative, actually. But others were pretty wounding, especially navigating the post-traumatic world of a police brutality survivor. In the height of Black Lives Matter, with all of these people being killed on my timeline, to these trolls, I wasn't a human. I was an idea, an object, a caricature. Did I mention that this race stuff can be kind of divisive? You see, I'm an innately curious person, and、uh, as I drew my sword to engage in epic battles in the comment section. <laughs> I also, I also began to notice that a few of my trolls actually had brains,、uh, which made me even more curious and want to understand them even further. And、uh, although these supposed morons engaged in what appeared to be original thought, I said to myself,、um, "These guys are highly misinformed, at least according to my knowledge." Where are these guys getting these arguments from? Like, was there some kind of alternative universe with alternative facts? <laughs> like, but I needed to know. Like, I wanted to know. And as it turns out, I had no idea about digital echo chambers, that same target marketing algorithm that feeds you more of the products you like to buy, also feeds you more of the news that you like to hear. I had been living in an online universe that just reflected my worldview back to me. So my timeline was pretty liberal. I had no Breitbart. Or Infowars or Fox News? No, no, I was all MSNBC and The Daily Show, <laughs> CNN and The Grill, right? So what I decided to do was trick the Facebook algorithm in defeating me more news that I didn't necessarily agree with, and this worked fine for a while, but it wasn't enough because my online footprint already established the patterns that I like to hear. So with the anonymity of the internet, I went undercover. I set up this ghost profile and went crazy. <laughs> Now, on a practical level, like it was very simple, but on an emotional level, it was kind of daunting, especially with the racist vitriol that I had experienced. Noticing that this stuff also worked on YouTube, I became Lucius 25, white supremacist lurker. <laughs> And digitally, I began to infiltrate the infamous alt-right movement. Now, my doppelganger was Edgar Rice Burroughs's John Carter character, <laughs> a sci-fi hero who was once a Confederate soldier. And to think, like years ago, I would have needed like acting training and like makeup and a fake ID. Now I could just lurk. <laughs> and so、um, I started. With a little info wars, went on into some American Renaissance, National Vanguard Alliance, and、uh, you know I started commenting on videos, talking bad about Al Sharpton and Black Lives Matter. I started、uh, bemoaning race baiters like Eric Holder and Barack Obama, <laughs> and、um, just mirroring the anti-black sentiments that were thrown at me. And to be honest, it was kind of exhilarating. <laughs> <laughs> Like, 
I would literally spend days clicking through my new racist profile, <laughs> <laughs> goofing, goofing off at work in Aryan Land. It was something else. <laughs> And so, I then started visiting some of the pages of my former trolls. And、um, a lot of these guys were just regular Joes. A lot of outdoorsmen, hunters, computer nerds. Some of them family guys with videos of their families. I mean, for all I know, some of y'all could be in this room right now, right? <laughs> But when I went undercover, I found a lovely plethora of characters, luminaries like Milo Yiannopoulos, Richard Spencer, and David Duke. All of these guys were thought leaders in their own right, but over time, the alt-right movement ended up using their information to fuel their momentum. And I'm going to tell you what else led to the momentum of the alt-right: the left wing's wholesale demonization of everything white and male. If you are a pale-skinned penis haver, you're in league with Satan. <laughs> Now, would you believe? Would you believe that some people find that offensive? <laughs> and, and so, I mean, listen. The fact is, is that millennials get a lifetime of diet brand history. I mean, America seems to be hell bent on filling its textbooks with、uh, Cliff Notes versions of its dark past. This severely. Severely decontextualizes race and the anger associated with it, and that is fertile ground for alt facts to grow. Add in the wild landscape of the internet, and、uh, it's easy to sell rebranded Mein Kampf ideas to a generation who has been failed by public schools. A lot of these ideas easily debunked. Alt facts have that quality. However, one thing kept screaming at me through the subtext of those arguments. And that was, why should I be hated for who I cannot help but be? That was a black man in America that resonated with me. I have spent so much time defending myself against attempts to demonize me and make me apologize for who I am, trying to portray me as something that I'm not—some kind of thug or gangster, a menace to society. Unexpected compassion. Wow. Now listen.、Um, the, Historical source of the demonization of black males and white males is highly different, and where you fall on this argument, sadly, tends to be an accident of birth. Now, you're probably surprised by this perspective, and so was I. Never in a billion years did I think that I could have some kind of compassion for people who hated my guts. Now, mind you, not enough compassion like want to be friends. I don't have infinite olive branches to extend to people. Who like would not want to see me on this planet, right? But just enough compassion to understand how they got to where they are. And to be honest, there were a couple of fair points. One of them, how is liberals have this wide acceptance for everybody, except for those with honestly held conservative viewpoints? <laughs> Heaven forbid you love God, this country, and mean it, right? And another thing that they talked about was this fear that they had of something that they labeled as white genocide, that diversity would be a force that would wipe them out. Now listen, I know what it is to fear for the fate of your people between crack, AIDS, gang violence, mass incarceration, gentrification, police shootings. Black people have more than enough reasons to stay up at night. But if nature is into diversity and you're not, you're gonna lose that fight, buddy. <laughs> you see, nature doesn't care about your race. That's man-made. Nature just cares about healthy organisms, and your precious ethnic features are expendable to that end. So the moment. So the moment that you let go of that racist identity and relatch onto humanity, all your problems go away. I'm going to tell you what race ain't about to die out: the human race. Join the party; the water's great. Until the water gets too hot, but that's another TED talk. 
The point is, is that to get to this point of understanding, you have to let go of that fear and embrace your curiosity. And sadly, too many people will not take that journey to see the world from the other side. And I mean, let's be honest, that doesn't just go for progressives, but also to the right wing and conservatives. You know, as fair as some of their points were, they were still trapped in their own echo chambers, recycling old, outdated points of view, never getting a diversity in perspective, not making them well-rounded in their worldview. We have got to break out of these digital divides, because as our technology advances, the consequences of our tribalism become like more dangerous. And this whole experience taught me something. Our gadgets ain't going to save us. All these uh, technological devices are only mastery of the universe out there, not the one in here. And so that's all IQ, not EQ. That's a dangerous imbalance. Where do you get the emotional intelligence, the character development, the virtues of patience, forbearance, compassion, you know, the things that make sure that these devices, however advanced, become a blessing and not a curse. Seems to me that humanity itself needs an upgrade. I don't believe in any kind of unbeatable monster. There was no giant out there without perhaps a simple Achilles heel. Now, what if I told you that one of the best ways to actually overcome this is to have courageous conversations with difficult people, people who do not see the world the same way that you see the world. Oh, yes, folks, conversations may be indeed the key to that upgrade. Because remember, language was the first form of virtual reality. It is literally a symbolic representation of the physical world. And through this device, we change the physical world. Keep in mind, conversations stop violence. Conversations start countries. They build bridges. And when the chips are down, Conversations are the last tool that humans use before they pick up the guns. We have to understand something. Human beings all want the same things, and we have to go through each other to get these things. These courageous conversations are the way that these bridges are built. It is time that we start seeing people as people, and not simply the ideas that we project onto them or react to. Human beings are not the barriers, but the gateways to the very things that we want. This is a collective and conscious evolution. My journey began with a terribly popular cell phone video and a fallen friend. Your journey begins right about now.